come on, you gotta admit that intro was absolutely epic. So just for that, drop a like on this video. I dare you. All right, what is going on guys? Before I actually start off with the video, I just wanted to remind you guys that there's currently an iPhone SE giveaway happening right now. There's three simple steps. Follow me on Instagram, subscribe to the Juan and Only, and be happy because life is good. Links for everything are down in the description. All right, so yes, you guys asked for it. Today I'll be telling you how to make the Magic Keyboard really useful. So I've seen a lot of people complaining on how there is no drawing mode or there's no note taking mode on the iPad Pro, but guess what? That is false. Technically. So if you actually turn the magic keyboard around, there you go. You kind of have a studying mode, a drawing mode on the iPad Pro. I get you. I feel like Apple should have done it in a better way, but that's the way you have to do it, I guess. There is sadly no way I'm turning down the brightness on the actual keys directly from the keyboard, but if you go over to settings, general, keyboards, hardware keyboards, you'll see a bunch of toggles over there. And from there, you can actually change the keyboard brightness of the backlit keys by simply sliding. Even though the actual keyboard brightness adjusts by itself, you can still do it by the setting. You can also change the use of certain keys. So for example, the most useful one to change is the control key because I basically don't use it for anything and I'm changing it to, to an escape key. Because you know, the Magic Keyboard on the iPad Pro does not have an escape key, but with this, you can actually use it as an escape key, so let's say you're watching a video, you simply press control and then you'll be exited from that video or from that movie. It's super useful, do it, go change it right now. If you go to settings, general, trackpad, you can actually change the speed of the trackpad. I personally place it right on the center because that's the one that I like the most. It's not too fast and it's not too slow, so it's up to you. For those who like to tap instead of clicking on a trackpad, that feature is there to turn on as well. You can also activate or deactivate a secondary click, so you'll get more info when you tap on a word, for example, and look at the definition. You get more info about an app. Same with music. You can actually see a bunch of info over there. You can actually tap on a link in Safari. A bunch of stuff with a secondary click, so if you don't have it activated, make sure it's activated because, well, it's quite useful. If you go to settings, accessibility, and pointer control, that will allow you to actually change the settings as well. It will let you modify the time that the actual pointer hides. So for example, me, after two seconds, the pointer actually hides, but you can change it to three seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds, whatever the heck you want. All right, so if you're a fan of colors, if you actually go in the settings over there as well, you'll actually be able to change the color of your cursor. So if you like green, you can change it to green. If you like pink, you can change it to pink. It's honestly awesome. I had no idea this was a thing. I, I went on Twitter and somebody tweeted that and I'm like, Wow. All right, so gestures. Let's go ahead and talk about gestures because gestures makes this keyboard so magical. Get it? Magic keyboard, magical. I'm so not funny. They are super useful to know and you need to know about them. For example, if you tap on the top left, you'll get the notification center. If you tap on the top right, you'll get control center. If you go to the bottom, you'll get your dock. If you go deeper, you'll go to the home page. And scrolling is super intuitive. You do that by scrolling with two fingers. Three fingers up will take you to your app expose, all your apps open. And then with two fingers, you can scroll over there as well. And you can also full screen on videos by zooming in. So basically treat the trackpad like you were just using an iPad. For example, zooming in on an image, that works. Zooming in on a video, that works with the trackpad. So if you don't really know, three finger swipes, it just basically makes sense and just try to remember all and you'll get used to it as soon as possible. I got used to it within 48 hours. You know what's also awesome apart from Chenya just chilling in the background? Paperlike. Paperlike is a screen protector that makes your iPad Pro feel and sound like you're actually writing on paper. Taking notes and drawing is one of my favorite things to do on the iPad, but the feeling that it has I just don't really like it. So with paper like you'll get that feeling like you're just writing on paper. So if paper like is something that you're interested in, hit the link down in the description. It's honestly awesome. All right, so here's another quick tip. If you press command on an app, it will let you know all the different shortcuts that there are in that app. And in iOS slash iPadOS, the shortcuts that you need to know are these. So command H will make you go to the home screen. Command tab will take you to your last opened apps. And then command Q will actually close those apps. So yeah, those are all the shortcuts. Those are all the most useful tips that I wanted to tell you guys today. Let me know in the comments down below, are there any tips or are there any tricks that I don't know about this magic keyboard because I have absolutely fallen in love, sorry Chenya, but I've absolutely in love with this keyboard. It's beautiful and I want to, I want to marry this keyboard. It's, you're a bit expensive. You are, you're a bit expensive, but you're quite good. You're sexy, you're, you're beautiful. Yeah. You guys are all invited to our wedding. Peace.